Good afternoon. Welcome to the first Traffic Stack webinar. Uh, really glad that you guys can come along and we appreciate you taking your time out uh, to come and see what we are all about. My name is Warren Dean. For those who I haven't met, I'm the analytics director here at Traffic Stack. I've worked in government for 15 years in the data analytics space, and I'm really excited to introduce you to Traffic Stack as a product and showcase how local government can leverage traffic data, parking data, and essentially the goal is that we're making data driven decisions. So just in terms of the agenda and how everything's going to run today, so I'll give you a brief introduction into Traffic Stack and what it is, who we are, and then you're going to hear from Sankit, our technical director on traffic and SCATs data management and analysis. And then next will be Bhavan, he's our innovation director, and he will be talking about parking data management and analytics. Now, if you have any questions, we more than welcome any questions that you have uh, what we would ask is if you could just save them to the end, we'll try to get through all the content as quickly as possible, and then we'll have an opportunity for Q&A at the end. Now, just to note, uh, this session is being recorded. Uh, there's a few people who, who apologize they couldn't make it. And also, if you want to share it with any of your colleagues, we'll make that available to you at the end of the day as well. So Traffic Stack as a company has been around for three years. Uh, it is essentially a company that has been built by people within local government uh, with expertise in traffic and data. And their goal really is to solve local government problems by implementing a digital transformation via traffic parking workflows um, and really you know honing in on that skill of understanding local government the pain points of local government and building a product that answers those pain points so currently we have three clients we work with hobson's bay city council maribyrnong city council and the city of Melbourne and look, we, sorry, Melton. We've had some really good feedback on how we've been able to build a solution that automates and works with the current technologies that you are using. So enough of the introductions. What I'll do is I'll let Sankit introduce himself. Sankit, if you want to take over and, and share the screen and just talk about traffic data management and the challenges in local government. Uh, thanks, Warren. So I'll share my uh, screen. Uh, hello, everyone. Yeah, I'm, uh, thanks for uh, joining this webinar. I'm a technical director at Traffic Stack. I worked in local government uh, for almost uh, 15 years and I have experience. Uh, I mean, I worked in traffic engineering, so I know how the traffic engineering uh, operates and works in local government. I work with uh, uh, various uh, municipalities. So uh, what I, I can, um, I was just thinking that what type of uh, data we are uh, dealing uh, dealing with on daily basis. So I was just uh, making a list. I think we have almost 15 different type of data sets. Uh, just click on my mind. It maybe it can be more than that, but like uh, uh, traffic data, pedestrian count data, bicycle data, LATM devices information, sketch data, uh, uh, so uh, and crested data. So we have various different type of data sets uh, we have to use uh, in our regular day to day life. And um, if we uh, look at um, how we manage that as an officer level, as a department level or as a council level. So this data sets are yes, yeah, some of the councils are have enough resources, good resources, good funding. They have extra um, officer who can manage some of the information, not all some of the information. And some of the councils are not having that good infrastructure or not having that many resources. Uh, there's sometimes the data set just stay into their computer and uh, or maybe someone is record that into their record management system. So these are the main uh, challenges uh, we face uh, in day to day regular uh, operating uh, operation of the traffic engineering uh, team. And uh, yeah, I, I just uh, uh, from my experience, I like to share the basic uh, uh, one of the challenges. Like, uh, for example, I want to create a work request. I, I want to create a work request to install traffic or parking sign. So how do I do that? Uh, I go, first of all, I print out the uh, street map, go on site, 
uh, mark the location of the sign uh, sign loca mark the location of the signs also mark on my plan come back to office i create a work request in word document or create a work request in pdf uh, uh, document uh, and this is really good met, uh, information but we just save it into into normal file and then it will uh, then we send it to uh, up, if you get approval, if I need to get approval, get the approval and then send it to operation center or depot to install it. Uh, and after once we do that, uh, sometimes we get the information back. Sometimes we don't get information back. It's up to the officer how they record the information in their computer, in record management system, or as I said, if uh, council is having GIS resource or other resources, then it can go into the GIS system. So we have um, all, all this information and um, all, all the processes, but uh, we cannot get the benefit, 100% benefit out of it because we don't have the right uh, tool or right system. Uh, another example I like to share is, for example, uh, traffic data. So based on customer uh, um, customer's request, based on speeding issue or any other channel, if you get the request to collect data, we go on site and um, collect data. Uh, then what will happen is uh, one officer collected data at that particular street and the data received by that officer, they just put it into their email or or they, on their computer. It's not uploaded back into the system. So the another officer get the same similar type of request, just go out again and collect the data. And that happens regularly. So multiple, uh, we collect the data at the same street multiple time. Uh, once we have the data, someone need to sit there and record all the data in one uh, spreadsheet. So if you look at these three main issues uh, in traffic engineering in local government is ad hoc data collection, uh, inefficient workflow, and the information is there, but it's not transparent. Not everybody can access that. So these are the main challenges uh, we have uh, with this many uh, data sets. And uh, that's why we need some solution to resolve it. So I'll hand over to uh, Bhavin. He will explain further on that. Thanks, Sankat. Um, so like Sankat mentioned, at the moment, um, we, we got a number of uh, different systems uh, within councils that uh, record data. Sorry, just the first about myself. I'm, I'm a strategic transport planner and modeler. Uh, by trade um, with local government experience over nine years and total sort of working experience in private sector and local government about 13, 14 years. Um, and a big data nerd and, and always wanted want to integrate uh, systems so that we can make some data driven decisions. Um, and when when we were sort of looking into developing a system, there are a few ideas that that we would we're talking about the traffic engineering and transport planning sort of works hand in hand. Um, if you have good data, uh, then you can make some really good data driven decisions. So we developed a system, a single system, which actually captures all the data from bottom up um, with smart data recording. So there's no additional steps required. You, you just as part of your day to day workflow, you record your data. Uh, you 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 uh, you create your work request and stuff like that, and then it, the data gets uh, recorded, and then that data we turn it into some valuable insights for you. And I'm I'm gonna touch touch on that in in a minute. Um, and and the all the other advantage here is that all of the data that you collect, whether it's a raw data or 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 analyzed data, all available through one single uh, single system rather than trying to find Excel files that are stored somewhere or or, or, or Word files or, or PDFs like Sanket mentioned. Um, and, and we've got some really good examples that we're going to share with you, um, particularly on the traffic data, for example. Um, you know, typically councils maintain a, a register where where you collect all this traffic data for different sites and, and the, the register Excel file sort of gets longer and longer. But if you want to quickly find certain site or what was historically happened and so on, it's really difficult to, to sort of uh, ship through that data um, and what traffic stack sort of provides is, 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 a, uh, is a really good, what we think is a really good solution and what our clients sort of um, uh, support as well uh, is that uh, it, it kept, uh, you can create requests 
for capturing traffic data. You can send it out to your, your contractors. Contractors collect the data, input the data into your system, and, and the data is available to all of the, all of the council, um, including the raw data itself. So you get the an analyzed data, the insights, and you get the raw data if you want to sort of dig in deeper. Um, so without sort of further ado, I'm going to hand over to Sanket to, to start uh, uh, doing a bit of a demonstration uh, piece, and then we will sort of uh, take it into the Q and A session. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, Varun. Yeah, so as you can see my uh, screen, this is a layout for uh, of Traffic Stack software. Uh, when you, uh, it's a, uh, everything is map based. So because of most of the work is related to street and the infrastructure on the street. So I think it's better to have a system where we can capture the data uh, from the map and uh, that will make a, our um, workflow is very efficient. So as you can see on the screen, this is uh, the all the dots are the location of the traffic and parking signs in this particular street. If I click on any of the dot, it will show me the related information. So this sign is like two hour parking sign, no stopping. So all this information which is in our Word document or PDF file where we are not, uh, it's not having, we are not using that metadata to make meaningful use. Here is everything is captured. It's not only an image, but it's, we capture the metadata of that uh, um, uh, from the particular sign. Uh, and on the uh, right hand side, can see um, information about that particular uh, information about this sign because this sign is not going through the uh, this is a data entry so that's why it's having limited information but when you click on the sign uh, which is going through the work request it will show the work request number it will have the approval date uh, who designed uh, who approved it so it capture all the information about that particular sign and the color of this uh, each sign is uh, is based on its status of the sign. So red, red is uh, it's a new sign, blue is approved sign, uh, then there's a, um, a green is installed sign. So uh, user can uh, engineer user uh, or management can see the in information live, so they don't have to wait for the go to the work request or find out the information. They can see everything on this map page. Uh, if it's a traffic sign, if I click like that, it will have all the sign information. So size of the sign, if it's uh, if it's related to these standards, it it will give all, all the information. Uh, so these are the uh, information capture as part of the workflow without any additional effort. So for example, if I'm on site, as I said, I have to mark on the piece piece of paper, come back to office, and then create a work request. No, if you have a computer or your iPad on site, you just create a click this dot. On I'll show you later on. Click this dot create a work request, attach this sign, and your work request is done. So the system in our normal traditional system, which this take maybe one and a half hour to two hours, the whole process, this can be done in five to 10 minutes. So that's uh, that way we can bring the efficiency and also this data is used meaningful way in various ways. I'll show you um, uh, in the for the process. So. So for example, so this is uh, around the school. I set up uh, all the sign uh, just as a uh, example. If I want to click the, if I click on the parking zone, it will show me the zone. So zone between two signs. So it's a geocoded location. So each zone is having their own information and it can use various ways. I'll, I'll show you that. So if it's a, a bus zone, it will come up as um, red. So if I click on the sign, it's a bus zone sign uh, between uh, yeah, these two locations, so it will come up yellow, uh, no parking, no stopping, uh, red. Uh, there's a blue color for the disabled parking bay. So if you click on that, user can exactly see which type of parking restrictions, uh, which type of information is there. I think sometimes uh, I spend, in, if I talk about my experience, I spend many hours in creating this type of parking plans. And if I change one thing, I have to go back again and uh, uh, start creating that, uh, amending that PDF file or the Word document and then create uh, another map. But here, everything is live. For example, if you change one sign, uh, and then you can just update the parking zone and everything's done. 
So you don't have to keep repeating yourself. No need to go back to the drawing board every time. Everything can, but everything can be done from the system. And someone, and our regular question we get in traffic engineering: uh, How many disabled parking bays are there in our CBD area, or how many ways a disabled bay near my home? By one click, engineer can provide this information uh, if you use this system. So, uh, so, so that way, it's a map base. It's a Google Map. You can, um, yeah, move in and out. Uh, without much problem, if you, it's uh, if I want to look at the parking signs in a street view, I can I get the approximate location. So all these green dots, so all the by uh, parking sign. Obviously, it's not very accurate in uh, street view, but still you can see the location of the sign. So if my dot is here, and sign is here, I can correlate. Yes, it is. It is my sign. It's correct. And uh, yeah. So uh, and if you look at the practical way, sometimes to just to find out one sign is missing and what sign it should be, I have to go on site and come back and uh, create a new work request and send it to our operation center. So that total cost to go on site, come back and create a work request is actually more than the sign itself. So that way it's not efficient. If the sign is missing, one click, I click here. I said, yeah, this two piece sign. I just use that as a in a work request and send it to the depot and said you install this sign. So, uh, so this is the one example of just using the sign and traffic and parking sign as a one data set. Uh, I'll show you, uh, you know, how we create, quickly show you the re uh, work request. So if the user is creating work request, um, user get this type of dashboard where uh, management team leader, coordinator, manager, everyone can see this dashboard and see how many work requests are there, how many approved. So everything can be tracked here. Uh, if I want to create a new work request, I won't go much in detail about filling up the form, but for example, I'll show you here. I just want to add two sign how quick how quick it is. So just quick. Uh, so which type of um, uh, asset it is? So it's a new poll. So I just select that. So sign is added. Uh, if is a uh, someone created sign um, uh, previously, then I can use that sign. So for example, I want to use the two or parking sign. So I just say 2P. I found my required sign. Just say, for example, I just add this sign. Select the direction. And that's done. If I want to use the same sign, I just copy and uh, yeah, paste here. And that uh, the sign B is created. So this uh, and um, as you can see here, so there's a new work request created. You can see the uh, exact sign and sign location uh, in, in this uh, small map. The sign information, let long, address, sign status. Uh, and if I want to add instruction, like sometimes we install the overlays or sometimes we do um, uh, replace the sign or some other information I want to provide, I can provide that. And also uh, the install, uh, installer will get the inventory. So they know exactly which sign and how many they need to order. So there's no by mistake they're ordering one sign and forget about the other sign, so it won't happen. So this is the very quickly. I'll uh, just show you this how we create a uh, work request. I just uh, I'll show you the one sign with the uh, traffic sign as well. So if I just add one sign here, click on the traffic. We have more more than 500 sign uh, traffic signs in the database uh, from Austrian standard. And if I just want to add this QA sign, I just click here. Select the size. If I'm happy with 900, then I change that. Select the direction, and that's done. So I don't need to go uh, look for the sign or um, find that information. And for example, if one sign is not there, I can upload into system, and then once I upload into system, it will stay in the system permanently. So any other engineer in the future, if they want to use that sign, uh, they can go and just use it. Thanks, Sanket. If I just uh, quickly touch base here on this screen, like what, what we've done, just, just again, the beauty of this, like using our systems in, within local government, sometimes you find the GIS systems are clunky and you know that the, the intra map is, is a little bit clunky. We have combined the best of the, the both worlds, like the Google, uh, who, which provides the, the best of the, the sort of the mapping interfaces and, and, and ability to program systems and, and also you got your traditional metro map and near map layers as well. So you, you have the access to the latest uh, satellite imagery 
in there as long as you have the license for it as per council. So some councils have Metro map uh, for their preferred supplier for their uh, mapping uh, as in the, 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 the images and, and some councils have near map. So as long as you've got the near map thingy, you can disconnect it to near map license and you have the best of both worlds. You, you have a really smooth interface to work with and, but also have the, the, the latest images uh, from, from your preferred provider and not having to rely on Google. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, thanks, Brian. Uh, so if I save the work request, uh, I get the uh, button for the send for approval. So if I, I were to send it to team leader, manager, yeah, I can select the user here, and then it can be assigned to that uh, user. So this is the work request. Um, the, for, for example, one sign, parking sign is not there. And what I'm talking about the metadata, the information we use in the system. So if I want to create a parking sign, I just select the size of the standard sign. So one by two is like our standard vertical panel. Uh, if I want to use as a like two uh, P parking restrictions, I just use two P uh, operating hours. I can select it from here, AM, PM, days, Monday to Friday, and I can select the direction and add sign. So it will create the sign automatically. And the, uh, the system will, will record all this information in the background. I want to add or copy uh, the sign and want to add another one. I can just create one and that can be added here and they can create the sign. So that all this data, uh, what we are using, you can um, engineer or any officer can create a, a digitally and save that information to system. And once you create this sign once, you can every next time you don't need to create it because it's already in the system. You just go there, uh, attach to this uh, dot on the map, and that's things done. Uh, the last thing I'll touch um, uh, is that uh, I think we discuss about the sign and sign information. So how we use that to create a parking zone. So for example, this uh, sign is having two uh, P. And another sign here is is also 2P. So I want to create a zone in between. It's already created, but I'll just create another on top of that. So start and then end. If the inform if the both signs are matching up, if the day information in both signs are correct, then I'll get a box in the middle. So which I tick and save. Uh, then it will create a parking zone. So now there's another parking zone created on top of the existing one. So that way it's parking zone will have all the information. You can parking occupancy data if you want to rec record, you can record into that. And once you create, for example, if, if around the school, if I create this type of zoning, uh, what's the benefit? Uh, benefit is after creating that, I want to give this information to the school parents, uh, school teachers and uh, any visitors of the area. So I can provide that information onto my council website. And uh, if I can show you, if I click here, they, this is a public page uh, of Google. Uh, the information will go there and can create a parking zone like this. And if I click on the parking zone, if, if I can open that in my mobile or your council uh, 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 website. And if I click on that, I get information about that particular parking zone. If it's like ticket parking, if it's a uh, P parking, 2P parking, 1P parking, everything can be filtered from the this left menu and a user can select that. And if I want to go to that location, so if, for example, if I'm using this from my mobile, so if I want to go to that location, I just click on the direction, the map will open the Google Maps and it will take the user to that uh, location uh, from that uh, person's home. So yeah, this is the, I'll just give you the quick overview of uh, this one parking and traffic sign module. Uh, I'll hand over to Bhavin. He will uh, talk about um, the traffic module. Uh, thanks, Sankar. So really good, really great example uh, on how the information is collected, analyzed, and also be made available for the community. And so similar to what Sankar demonstrated for traffic, and parking signs and workflows. Um, we have a similar module for traffic data capture. So again, um, a map, uh, I'm showing you a real example of Melton City Council here, more than uh, 1,000 
uh, traffic count sites, um, and these are sort of uh, uh, these are the sites where council regularly captures uh, traffic data. Um, they can they can capture it from the system. They can create a new project to capture data. And again, similar to what what Sanket showed as a work request, uh, you can create a work request for your traffic uh, count data. Your contractor gets the request automatically, uh, and then contractor can go out on the site. Um, capture the data once the data is collected, uh, record the data into your system um, and uh, uh, and upload any any of the raw data files. So I'll just jump on to an example here. Uh, this is a site on Goli Road where council has been collecting data from 2005 to 2021. Uh, and as you can see, you can see, you can see the historical trends um, uh, on in terms of how the traffic is growing on this uh, on this location here. Uh, you got every individual uh, a year from 2005 to 2021 uh, in terms of the average weekly uh, seven day average, uh, sorry, weekday average, seven day average, AM peak volumes, PM peak volumes, uh, the, the heavy vehicle proportions, uh, speeding issues, 85th percentile speed limits, and so on and so forth. Uh, and each year you can download your Excel file or the eco file. Uh, straight from the system. Again, like um, typically how council captures data is just maintaining an Excel uh, register of traffic counts um, of what is done. You don't have to maintain a, such a register and, and you get uh, a much more intuitive way to capture your data, uh, reduces a lot of manual handling, saves you a lot of time and gives you some valuable insights. So how do we turn this into insights? Um, so this is the site where we have data, obviously, for the last uh, long term time series um, and, and, and we can link it straight to a Power BI dashboard. This is where sort of the, the dashboarding sort of comes in. And again, all of those sites where you capture data, long term time series and so on. So I'm going to just click on one uh, site, which is the same site, and then I can I can view uh my traffic data over the years uh, proportions of trucks on that um and over the years i can see my speeding issues and so on so um historically there was some speeding issue at this location and it still is uh, as you can see the 95th percentile um speed limit on both direction is over 60 at this location and i can i can use this data to make some decisions around uh, around this road uh, um, in, in terms of uh, this is particularly a, 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 a high road, a road, so not 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 so much around the traffic calming measure, but around uh, uh, around more visible signage and, and 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 enforcement and so on and so forth. So that's one um, example of um, how we turn data into insights. Then it's all all part of the package. It was in there. Um, um, the other example is that um, Melton City Council, uh, just going back to the map again, the orange icons are the sketch data. So uh, within Victoria, um, the data is available uh, for uh, on the on the open data website. Um, so the, the, just the raw data coming out of um, sketch in terms of the traffic volumes. Um, so we have con uh, we have loaded up about uh, 60 signals that are within Melton, and what it does is provides a continuous data series uh, for uh, for your sketch uh, locations uh, within your municipality. Um, and 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 as you can see, this is particularly one location. I'm just gonna go back to the map and show you from the interface here. So Ballarat Road and Christie's Road. Um, Ballarat Road is not a council road, but again. It's good to see the data here. Um, good to make some uh, decisions around uh, traffic modeling. If, if I was to do some modeling on on my local roads, um, uh, long term time series from 2014 to 2022, I can I can see the COVID impacts and then the COVID sort of coming, everyone starting to come back, and and you can see the February month, uh, which was the last month, um, is sort of spiking back again uh, for that approach uh, and how how would that sort of flow into my local road network um, uh, and so on and so forth so uh, this is also automatically updated in background once 
once the system is loaded, there's no manual input required. Um, the system grabs uh, all the data on a monthly basis, uh, processes it, and uploads it into the system, adds the extra data data points. Um, in terms of the other other things that we we have within the package, in terms of the analytics, is your the stock standard uh, crash stat. Uh, crash stat is fully customized for your council. Uh, you get quick quick insights for your uh, for your crash stats, uh, within your council if you're interested, and and it's also open for other council. This particular menu where you can see other councils as well if you want to compare your neighboring councils uh, for analytics. Uh, and finally, the the um, the data you captured on your um, traffic and parking sign, what Sanket sort of explained. I can see Melton has uh, 5,438 signs mounted on 4,954 uh, uh, poles or, or uh, mounting locations. I can view by mounting type. I can view by parking or traffic signs. Um, Melton did a bulk upload in 2021 of their data, so they, that's why you're seeing a lot of data in here in the 2021. Uh, but the idea is that as you as you create your work request and uh, and and maintain your work request through the system, you, you can track it through each year, like how many signs you installed, how many signs you approved, so on and so forth. Uh, yeah, and then yeah, I can I can just quickly uh, look at the same same information in a Power BI menu. Uh, which is this particular sign, regular during the giveaway, sign code, and so on. So, so I think yeah, that's the that's the sort of the gist of it. You capture the data um, um, it, through a system for all of your traffic and transport needs, and then you turn that data into insights and use it for better servicing of your community. And that's the beauty of like the the the. The advantage that we have is that we've we've got we've been working in the local government. We have we have seen all these uh, uh, conventional processes. Uh, we use those processes, and, and we thought that there can be a better way uh, of doing things. Um, and and that's how we sort of started developing this. So so developed by people working within local government while working within local government, um, and. and for the local government sort of thing. So I think that's that's the end of my segment. I think uh, I'll hand over to Warren and for questions. Yeah, thank, thanks, Pavan. So we've, we've got 10 minutes left for questions. Now, you're more than welcome. People are dropping them in the chat. That's fantastic. If you want to ask your question, just raise your hand and I'll, and I'll hand over to you or feel free to drop them in the chat. So the first question we've got from Adil is, do you integrate into an existing work order system asset management system. Sanket, do you want to answer that? Oh, no, we, we can look at the uh, type of the system and see uh, yeah, what we can do with that. Yeah, the, uh, so yeah, the rationale behind that is we don't want to end up in another you know, request management system um, and then create another data silo within this platform. Uh, yes, so yeah. If we have an so, existing system, we want to just uh, integrate. So it, our system communicate with uh, your GIS system, asset management system, record management system. So depending upon the type of the system, we can um, yeah, sit together and find out which is the best way to uh, set up the communication channel, and definitely that can be set up. Do you have the so API wanna... published? Do Not the API, your... but we have the we have the the data hooks um, for um, so what we're exploring at the moment with. Uh, 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 Hobson's Bay Council is that they they want to publish the exact same information into their intra maps uh, as a as a stopgap measure uh, for 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 some time until everyone in the organization sort of get used to the newer system and 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 we just uh, we have the data hooks where they can they on a daily basis uh, uh, the data gets updated and the the intra map. Uh, the, server, the SQL server reads into that information and updates their inter intra maps um, from there. Okay. So that there are that there are things that um, obviously I think with the you you will have to acknowledge um, that there, there are things that we, with with the Microsoft Azure platform and the conventional record management system like uh, Tech One or so on, 
uh, there are things that that needs to be looked at on a case by case uh, basis for it, sort of just the, the standard export transport and load protocols yeah yeah excellent uh, another question from Adil is where are you getting the traffic data from data.fic.gov.au yeah, so the uh, the traffic data is the council collected data, the tube counts, and the sketch is from data.week.gov.au. Yeah, excellent. Uh, another question from Gavin. With the parking zones where they are for metered sites, is there integration with the meters to show which are free and which are occupied in real time? Oh, yes, yeah, we can. Um... Uh, we have the module for uh, parking machines, so parking meters, so we can show that and uh, uh, it can link to the parking zone. And yeah, if council is willing to, uh, if the council is having the parking sensors, we can connect to that as well. So yeah, so we have a parking machine module as well to manage that. Yeah, so the, the, the I think that's just here, uh, Gavin, is that um, again, the parking sensor supplier uh, would be different for, from council to council, and and the willingness to uh, open that data source would be different as well from from supplier to supplier. So as long as the supplier is sort of open, um, we are happy to sort of work. And and and, and the syst our systems are sort of in place for for relaying that information anyway. So it's just waiting for that information, whether it's a static information or a dynamic information coming through. So you there. need. You need their API, is it? Yeah, yeah. Excellent. That sounds good. Thank you. Thanks, Kevin. Um, next question from Nuno. Can you have patronage data from PT? For PT, sorry. That's, uh, thanks for that question, Nuno. Um, that that one is a little bit uh, a, a more trickier. Uh, because my from my work experience, um, and I, I, I do a lot of the transport modeling, um, um, mesoscopic modeling, and, and, and strategic modeling, and every time we need data for those validation criteria, we have to go back to DOT or, or respective um, Department of Transport within the state uh, and trying to source that information manually. Um, I, I hope and I wish that um, in future, um, the department is a bit more open related to public transport data as well, similar to SCETS, and, and they publish that information and someone like us uh, can figure that out and, and, and put it onto our system. But yeah, the intention is there. Uh, it's just that the, the data from from uh, DOT is not publicly available for everything like that in a, in a, in a consumable sort of format. Yeah, and the, some of the Mikey data was available on the website, but then DOT stop updating this information, so the data is not up to date. Yeah. Okay, excellent. Uh, Sean would like to, is keen to understand the source of traffic data and how would quality be ensured? Yeah, so the source of, again, the traffic data uh, is your um, tube counter, um, tube counts, whether you do it in-house or you have a contractor. Uh, and and through um, rather than managing it through emails in terms of your quality control, you just manage it through your system here, where you create a request uh, to capture sites, um, and then the contractor goes out on the site, comes back with the data, loads into your system, and then sends for your approval. And then you, uh, as a traffic engineer, review that information and say, yes, I'm happy with this, or I'm not happy with this, and so on, and go out, go out there and redo it. And if you're happy, then the system uploads the data yeah, and uploads uh, updates all the other interfaces uh, that are being hooked. Um, and uh, and yeah, uh, and if you refuse it, then it, it it's just another like the loop back where they go out again and do the do the counting again. So it's, it is your data uh, in a way. Uh, it's your council's data. Yep. Yeah. Excellent. And. Ohid would like to know: Will these signs, will this, will the signs map be available to public on Google Map? That's a great question. Yeah. <laughs> um, 
the the sign data like we want to keep this system as open as possible and again working within uh, starting with victoria and sort of branching out like we want to be in that space where everyone it, it's like freely available to your council like every council so if you want to look at your neighboring council similar to what we've done with the with the uh, parking uh, zones information uh, we if the council allows it we want to make that publicly available and what it helps is that when you pub make it publicly available, you can crowdsource some of those technical issues that we face on day to day. You know, sometimes signs is miss signs are missing for days and days, and and someone do enough in in the community pick it pick it up or something. You know, or or signs broken or twisted or something like that or not not compliant. They can just report it from there, and and that 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 sort of process typically you have to either capture it via site visits or you just happen to be by chance on on a site and then you you spot something um but yeah again uh, we we want to be open uh, the platform is built in a way that the accuracy of just geocoding is that we we are confident that when when fully autonomous vehicle uh, comes online we can actually pinpoint to the exact parking zone bay uh, that the cars can park into for that duration of time period. So, the, yes, the 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 autonomous vehicle will have the smarts, the cameras, and the lidars, and so on. But then, at the same time, they will also have this geocoded information on where they can go and they can't go without having to read the signs. Um, so, yeah, that's the that's the I, I guess the long term long term intention, and it it, it comes in with that partnership uh, with yeah. council. And, and the, the beauty of building it on the Google platform is that we see that Google Google Maps be, it being a preferred platform for most public users anyway. Uh, that's the that's the whole beauty of of, of having um, having it um, on on the Google. Yeah. Yeah, and then just with the start, I think I'll show you the one uh, map for the that was the Melton Council area. But if all the council that's a, um, in that public page, if all of the council will start adding the data, at least it will clear the map for the Victoria. And it at least uh, the community in the Victoria, uh, for example, even if I'm in uh, Melton City Council or I'm in an inner city area, I can see the whole map. I can see all the parking zones. And if I'm going even going from uh, Melbourne City to um, Melton. I can select the parking bay. I can select the location. I can see the information, and then uh, the Google Maps will drive me there. So once we have all the councils um, on board, and uh, as Bavin said, everybody is happy to support this. Then uh, yeah, it's possible. Excellent. Any any more questions? Uh, I don't see any in the chat, but any more questions that anyone would like to ask? Yeah, so uh, Tom here. I just would like to ask uh, one question. Is that uh, when you place the uh, site in in the system, so right, that it show the date of the installation itself, so that it's uh, when our local laws is uh, they receive that information as when when people got find that such a challenge yes. so think that that, that installation. Yes, yeah, yeah. It it will yes. uh, for example, uh, it's if it's a uh, parking sign. Yeah. It will uh, when the sign installer will install the sign. It will. Show you the installation date. Uh, installer can uh, uh, attach the photograph with the sign, so it will show the photograph. And if it's a parking sign, it will show 15 days. For 15 days, it will show the grace period. So it will sign will come in a different logo. So if the parking officer will have access to the system, they can see exactly which signs are installed newly. They can see the grace period. So before booking the vehicle, uh, they can decide yeah if they want to book it or not. So. That's already integrated into the system. Uh, yeah. Okay. Thank uh, you. That's a that's a great question. I I, uh, I hope. Uh, I, sorry, I was I, I thought Sankar, you might show a real example on, uh, on, on the map <laughs> because that that's the that's the exact same question yes, we get yes, asked okay, all the sure, time, but... and 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 Sankar, particularly working in the traffic engineering area or as a traffic engineer for years. This is this is the thing that we traffic engineers sort of deal with on a day to day basis. Yeah, so this was a you can see instead of normal sign, you can see this uh, G uh, here. I'll just go to the map. I think it's better. Yeah, 
Yeah, so if I click on this sign, it's showing in a different color. It's showing G. G means it's a grace period. So it's showing that grace period will end on 11th of March. So mm -hmm. till that time, it will stay in this state. So if any officer, parking officer or anyone, anyone will see, they know yeah, what's happening. Yeah, so any enforcement guys using this same system on their on their iPhone, iPads or, or mobile phones when they go out, they know where to book and where, to, where not to book uh, sort of thing. Yeah. Yeah, great. Thank you. Thanks, Tom. Um, so we, we do have one last question about um, subscription payments, those type of things. Um, look, we, we would love to um, have the opportunity to talk to anyone further who is interested in finding out more. Um, we, we haven't shown you everything that we have. We'd like to do some more webinars to show you some other use cases and things. Uh, we will send uh, the recording of this session to you. We'll send an email. Um, and if anyone wants to get in touch in talking about moving forward, other things they can do, other uh, functionality of traffic stack we'd, we'd love to have that conversation with you so um, thank you for your time I'll just put up that last slide with the, with the thank you um, you have our email addresses anyway uh, but uh, we're only a couple minutes over which is great but what I'd like to say is thank you so much for your time uh, we will send you an email with a link for this recording uh, if you do want to hang around if you have some other questions we're happy to stick around for a little bit um, but appreciate you taking time out of your lunch to come and see what we are all about and we'd love to get to know you more and understand your problems and and see how we can help you out so thank you so much appreciate you coming along and uh, we, we hopefully will be in touch and continue the conversation with you thank you Thank so, you. Thanks, everyone. Thank, Thank you. All. All good.